Welcome back, dear viewers of Imam Hussein TV and another segment of Morning Barakah. We've had a very interesting discussion so far. Um, it's going to get more interesting because now we're going into the respiratory system, um, specifically the lungs um, and the diseases associated with that. We're covering um, in our previous episode with um, our kind of resident expert within the field. Firstly, let me introduce him, Dr. Sayyid Yasser Madani. Thank you very much for, for being here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Um, so me and Zara were actually discussing some, we, we, we delved into smoking um, mm. and the effects of smoking, yeah. cigarettes specifically in our last episode. Um, this episode we want to kind of focus more on the kind of the, the shisha or hookah as, as, as it's mentioned in, in, in America. Um, and of course there's the alternative when it comes to e-cigarettes as well. Mm. So I'm going to delve into this kind of field. So tell us a bit about the mechanism of, 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 of shisha. Um, in, in terms of, you know, because we, we were also discussing how, how bad it is. Well, it's, it's you know, as, as laymen, we hear different aspects. Yeah. It's okay, and I know I've got a few medic friends who'd like absolutely no. So, mm. really, from your expert opinion... Debunk the myth, if you can, for us. Yeah, so the, the trouble is, where we are with shisha at the moment, we're probably in the same state as we were with cigarettes about 100 years ago, where mm. we didn't actually know about the harms of tobacco smoking cigarette smoking and and actually as we mentioned in the previous episodes they were publicized they were people were encouraged to smoke uh, you know even doctors used to smoke at that time and you know um, I don't think although shisha has been around for a long time I don't think it's been researched and studied as well mm -hmm. as cigarette smoking possibly because it's not something that was created in the West, so yes. it hasn't been subject to that yeah. scientific okay. investigation uh, as much as smoking. Uh, you know, it's something that's come from the East, from both uh, the, you know, Asian world, but also the Middle Eastern world. Um, I think nowadays more and more is uh, being done in terms of looking into the effects of shisha. Shisha smoking is still harmful. That's what we know so far. There was a study by the World Health Organization, uh, WHO, um, which found that an average shisha session, and an average shisha session could be anywhere between 20 to 80 minutes, but let's say around 60 minutes uh, of smoking equates to smoking 100 cigarettes. Wow. So 100 cigarettes is actually, you know, it's actually quite a lot. It's about mm. how much a chain smoker smokes in a week. Wow. You know, if you imagine you 20 cigarettes a day, or 15 cigarettes a day times seven. It's around 100, 140, you know. Mm. So it's actually, it's actually quite a lot. So, um, and that's just one shisha session. If, mm. you, if you do that for an hour, those that smoke more, there are some people that smoke twice a week, you know, on social occasions. There are some that are kind of uh, chain shisha smokers shisha, yeah. Yeah. that do it, you know, on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, it's probably not, uh, you know, everyone that does no. it, but, um, so it's, it is harmful. We know it contains tobacco and it co contains carbon monoxide. In fact, studies have shown that it contains more carbon monoxide oh, than, cigarette. than cigarette smoking. Yeah. The problem with carbon monoxide is also has a high affinity for hemoglobin. So if you, our viewers remember from the first episode where we talked about gas transfer mm -hmm. and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us in such a way that the air sacs, the alveoli, the gas, the oxygen goes into the alveoli, diffuses across the thin membrane, the wall of the alveolus, and into the blood vessel, and hemoglobin attaches. Actually, carbon monoxide takes the place of oxygen and attaches to the hemoglobin. Oh, wow. So actually, it's reducing the amount of oxygen being, you know, going around in the body. Um, that, that's just one of the effects. Of course, we know there's loads of other chemicals mm. within tobacco and, and shisha smoking and cigarette smoking that, that cause the harm. Can we, because in, in from what we've understood from your discussions in some previous episodes, that um, the, the the kind of the diseases or the um, the conditions um, that affect the lungs, for example, asthma, for example, um, you know, uh, maybe things like pneumonia, the coughs. Have there been any studies that link these conditions back to shisha? And by the way, just just yeah. as a side note as well, the World yeah. Health Organization. What do they? What term do they use for shisha? Because I'm not. I'm pretty sure they don't use shisha. Do they use no, so I, th I think there's a general awareness about shisha now nowadays, and because what it is. Well, the reason I ask is because you, you mentioned that you know it, it, 
because it's come from the East or, mm. or the Middle East, um, and so therefore there may not be that many, that many studies in the West because mm. they haven't been really exposed to it that much. Mm. Is there a, a, a technical term for it? Is there a name for it? Because we know it as shisha, but is yeah. there a name so, for it? So water pipe. Water pipe. Yeah. Okay. But, they, but they do know, whenever you look up shisha, if you go Google shisha now, yeah. uh, and you, you Google, is shisha harmful to health? Yeah. What are the harms of shisha? Okay. You will know that actually they are quite well informed. Okay. Probably 50, 40, 30 years ago, they probably didn't know as much about mm -hmm. shisha, but now they know all the synonyms of shisha. Right. All these websites, they'll mention shisha, also known as water pipe, argila, yeah. nargila, yeah. hookah, yeah. all yeah, these yeah, terms, yeah. hubble bubble, hubble bubble you know, yeah. all these terms. That, so they're actually well informed about okay. them. Cool. Cool. Um, so those conditions, are they linked back to? So. I don't think shisha, by the same merit that cigarette smoking, helps those conditions. You know, if you already have a pre-existing lung condition, we know asthma can be exacerbated by exposure to cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. Right, just being a passive smoker can, can make your asthma worse. Of course, yeah. uh, but on top of that, if you actually smoke, whether it's cigarettes or shisha, because it's, it's almost the same product really, mm -hmm. um, you're doing damage to your to your airways, to your lung tissues, etc. Um, I don't think we have enough studies to quantify the damage as much as we do with cigarette smoke. Yeah. But we do know enough to say at the moment that actually shisha is harmful and people shouldn't smoke mm. shisha. And I gave you that figure, which is quite starking. I, I couldn't imagine when I first read it, how one hour of shisha yeah. smoking is actually equivalent to 100 cigarette, mm. cigarettes. So cigarettes. As a non-smoker, I know that cigarettes have certain filters mm. and shisha. So my understanding is I always hear about the fruit flavors and then they have tobacco in them. Mm. So then what's the, is, so is the amount of tobacco equal to sort of a cigarette or a pack of cigarettes? And then what's the filter mechanism for a shisha? Yeah, so I mean, I've, I've read that one puff from the shisha is equivalent to a cigarette. Oh, wow. Really? So that's one way of... Mm. You know, Equating trying it. to see how much equals what. The, the, the flavours is one of those things that attracts people to, you mm. know. Yeah. Just like e-cigarettes, there's flavours, you know. There's nothing, you know, amazing about it. It's just yeah. a marketing technique, mm -hmm. really. Um, cigarettes, when you buy them as a whole cigarette, has a filter. It still doesn't filter, you know. Yeah. Mm. You know, and that doesn't, you know, eliminate the harm. We know that for a fact. There's a misconception that the water in the shisha filters all the chemicals and the products and toxic toxins, but actually only about 5% of those are filtered by the water. Most mm. of them are not. So actually that's a misconception. The other thing is with the cigarettes, the, the, um, there's only so much you can puff in yep. to inhale, uh, or as deep, uh, there's only so, uh, yeah. so deep you can inhale, um, if that makes sense linguistically. Um, because it's quite toxic to the airways, yeah. and people people will notice it. But with the shisha, I think the theory is the water cools down the smoke that you're inhaling, so it allows you to inhale deeper, yeah. uh, and potentially that can, you know, allow the toxins to get deeper into the lungs. It is, yeah, hundred percent. So I I really would like to kind of focus more because obviously it's it's one of the major major topics that mm. parents have an issue with, mm. as well as the youth kind of being accustomed to. Shishas are, it's a, it's a social norm where, mm. you know, youths, elders, whoever, they get together on a Friday or a Saturday or on a weekend just to, re, you know, wind down, sit with their friends and socialize. And for them, the justification is, well, look, I mean, it's, it's, it's better that I'm here rather than doing other substances in another, in another, you know, place of ill repute, should we say. Um, I mean, I know, of course, the mm. the two wrongs don't make a right, but is this is this all, you know is it okay? I, mean, I, I it's, of course it's not okay, of course, but what what can we do to to to, to kind of tell them that actually it's not okay because it's it's now such a fast paced world yeah. and it's so ingrained within people's lifestyles yeah. to suddenly remove it. Well, they'll say, well, okay, fine. If you're going to take this away from me, mm. what, what do I do? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I think. I think shisha smoking is it probably has more of a social connotation than mm. cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is maybe 50 years ago. Cigarette smoking, you know, when I see my elderly patients and I ask them, "How much did you smoke back in the day?" They say, "Oh, I was just a social smoker. Oh. Um, I only smoked once or twice a, 
a week when I was you know, uh, in a gathering of friends or family or whatever. Nowadays, that's how most people that smoke shisha probably smoke shisha, you know, in, in a gathering. So um, there's a lot of social connotation attached to it, and it's seen as an alternative to other things, other things that may be worse. I think part of that, the problem that I have with that is I don't think people have the awareness. Just as about 100 years ago, during the you know, First World War, people probably at that time didn't know about the harms of cigarette smoking. It, you know, it just hadn't been studied. People thought smoking was absolutely fine. Um, uh, to the extent that I, I mentioned in the last episode, I've seen a, an advert of a, of a doctor wearing a lab coat mm -hmm. giving a cigarette to a patient. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays that would be blasphemy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's about really raising awareness about the potential ill effects of shisha, and then leaving people to decide. Yeah. And that 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 applies to anything in life. Yeah. People need to be informed for them to be able to make a, an informed decision. That yeah. what we don't want is for people to take part in something they didn't know, and yeah. then forty years down the line, where they've developed irreversible lung damage. Mm. They then say, well, no one told me actually in my group of friends. You know, I saw my dad doing it, my granddad was doing it, my country, that's normal, you know. So if, if, if there is such a, a damaging effect to the, to the health, um, and some reports suggest obviously that, you know, one, one puff is one cigarette, one hour session is a hundred cigarettes, mm. why aren't there any major marketing campaigns to fight shisha smoking? Yeah. Not, not eradicate it because it's, it's it's quite difficult to do so. There are yeah. obviously laws and regulations in place mm. and everything, but just to just to raise awareness because a lot of youth kids they see their parents or their elder brother yeah. leave. I think, I think do it. number one, we're quite behind. I, I don't I, I don't think I can compare the shisha industry to the tobacco industry. Oh, tobacco industry is very strong. Yeah. It has a very strong lobby. Yeah. Um, but I, I think we are quite behind in understanding scientifically the effects of shisha over. Because the effects, there's a lag. As with cigarette yeah. smoking, the effects don't happen mm. straight away, yeah. such that they manifest in a clinically significant way. There's a lag of several decades until the effects build up, right? So it's only been in the last decade or so, or more, that there's been an interest in Cisha from, from an academic, scientific yeah. Yeah. point of view. So there's going to be a lag for us. You know, observational studies, when they're carried out, they have to continue following these subjects yeah. up for many yeah. years, two yeah. decades, until they see an effect. So that's one thing. The other thing is um, there has been some actions, you know, some legislations, for example, several years ago, if you remember, um, shisha use, use was banned mm -hmm. within closed yeah. uh, uh, circles, yeah. you know, um, in, in restaurants, restaurants or cafes yeah. or whatever. Now you have to use shish shisha in an outside, outside yeah. you know. So uh, there obviously is now an appreciation that there's a degree of harm Mm -hmm. Passive smoking from shisha is mm -hmm. also harmful mm -hmm. in the same way that cigarette smoking is. Coincidentally, just on that note as well, the, the rebranding of, of, of cigarettes. Because mm. cigarette packaging, um, before you were allowed to use, companies were allowed to use their logos, their mm. messages, whatever. But now that's been rebranded mm. um, due to the laws and regulations where you, can, you can't have any logo. It's just literally just the name yeah. of, of the brand on the packaging. And also, every single packaging has a picture of something uh, a disease related yeah. Yeah. image of a person who is deformed or, yeah. or something has happened to them now with e-cigarettes mm. that is now changing as well because with mm. e-cigarettes and and e vapes as it's called and there's a major rise in that trend because a lot of people say okay sh cigarettes are harmful shisha is harmful i still want that nicotine so i'll go to vapes mm. now with vapes there's also uh, uh, yes. laws and regulations in place to rebrand yeah. the the packaging as well but can we just before because we don't have much time can we touch upon the, the, the is that is that the e-cigarettes are they a good alternative yeah. now there are other alternatives that you'd yeah. probably sort of say so the the best alternative is to stop smoking and hopefully we have time at the bottom at the at the end of the program to talk about how to stop smoking okay. uh, very briefly. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> you know. I think, yeah, not, we can talk about that now but, actually because yeah. I think. But e cigarettes, yeah. actually, again, they're very new, mm. um, they're novel, and so we, we don't know as much about them. And again, it will take years for us to carry out observational studies to find out what are the effects over time yeah. of e cigarettes. There was a report published in 2015 by, the, by Public Health England and another report the year after in 2016 by the Royal College of Physicians. Essentially, I just summarise. 
they both promoted e-cigarettes as a form of an alternative to tobacco smoking. All right, not, not for someone who's naive to smoke, and I'm not going to sit here and say for someone who's completely naive to any form of smoking mm. to start using e-cigarettes, no way. Because mm. we still don't know about the exact harms over many years of, of, mm. of, 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 of e-cigarette smoking. But we know enough at the moment to say they're less harmful than tobacco smoking. And the, the, the advantage of e-cigarettes is they only contain nicotine, which is the addictive substance in cigarette smoke. Right. So they replace that, nic that nicotine. Um, they don't contain all the other stuff, the carcinogens, the tar, etc., etc., etc. So that's the advantage. It's still not, I, it's still not something that is licensed that I can prescribe as mm. a practitioner. It's still controversial, mm. and many of my colleagues uh, would dispute, uh, you know, those reports and, and, and would not encourage e-cigarettes. I have a slightly more pragmatic approach to it, and I'd say. You know, I'd still go through the conventional route of helping someone to stop smoking, but if they still have tried all the other alternatives, which we'll talk about shortly, um, and they still can't, you know, mm. I can explore e-cigarettes as an option. I can't prescribe it or officially condone it because, you know, it's not yet prescribable. It's not licensed. Um, and there are still some concerns about e-cigarettes, you know, uh, exactly what are the long-term effects, what mm. other chemicals are in there, what it's are the It's difficult, effects? isn't it? It's we very don't difficult. have the data. It's very difficult, it's difficult to make a decision. Because, yeah. you know, in, in medicine, we like to have the data to be yeah. able to make yeah. evidence-based decisions. Yeah. Exactly. You know? um, how do people stop smoking? Number one, I think willpower is the main thing. 100%. For them to be aware, number, number one, essentially, of the harms of cigarette smoking, but then move on to actually having the willpower to want to stop. If they don't have the willpower, there's nothing you can do. You can't force anyone to do yeah. anything. Um, but there's a smoking cessation service in the NHS, and if, if people go to www.nhs.uk forward slash smoke free, mm -hmm. F-R-E-E, -E, smoke free, one word, and inshallah the channel can put that down at the bottom of the screen, um, then they can you know um, access services or go to their GP and get referred either way uh, to smoking cessation services. It's always better to do that rather than to try on your own. These are sh shown to be successful. So you have a smoking cessation advisor who talks, through, talks to you through the triggers of what makes you smoke, what are the reasons you smoke, what are the alternatives, what can you do, etc. And then there's medical therapy, so nicotine replacement therapy. There's a patch that you can put on that you replace every 24 hours. That provides the nicotine, which is the addictive substance, that replaces it over 24 hours. And then there's about five or six other methods that you can use for cravings when you want to reach out for a cigarette, yeah. like an inhalator. If you really like the sensation of holding something and, you know, um, mm. and, and, and sucking on that, or a lozenge, or, mm. a, or a gum, or a nasal spray, or a... Uh, a tablet under the tongue, mm -hmm. that releases instant nicotine and you can use that several times in the day for cravings. So you should always use two of them. If that hasn't worked, then there's other medications like, like Champix, for example, and other things, Bupropion, that can be prescribed by these practitioners or even your GP that can be used. But having that with the support of the smoking cessation advisor is better. Is, is it self-referral or do you have to go through the GP? So I think you can self-refer through that website and okay. I think the GP can also refer you. Okay. But everywhere has services no, right. lo locally. Yeah. So it's very easy to access. Um, and you highly advise it. And it's it. best to do it, you know, we were discussing this earlier, to, 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 to set a date, have mentally focused and mentally ready and say, that's it, I'm going to cut cigarettes on that day yeah. rather than gradually yeah. Yeah. coming down. That's less successful. Mm. Um, and you're still exposing yourself to cigarette smoke over time. And obviously we've had a quite an in-depth discussion off air as well. And we were saying, you were saying to us that with cigarettes, that if people um, have it because it distresses them, then if they cut it down slowly and then an, an event, un, you know, unplanned event happens that causes them more stress, they're more likely to pick up the yes. cigarettes yeah. again, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So, brilliant, thank you. We could talk about this a lot, um, and it's unfortunate that we only have the, the yeah. limited time with yourself, um, Dr. Yasser. It's uh, always been such an insightful time with you. Thank you so much for Pleasure. your time and your input. Yeah, yeah so uh, on that note, myself and Zara will be welcoming Sayyid Ali Nawab after the break, so please stay tuned.